Okay, so we need to talk about it. Is tourism perpetuating colonialism in places like Hawaii and Puerto Rico? Because I'm in the Hawaiian island of Oahu right now. And I've seen beautiful beaches packed with tourists. But just a few steps away, you see this. And most of the houseless population here in Hawaii is made up by native Hawaiians. And you also see things like this because some native Hawaiians believe what's happening today can be traced back to the illegal overthrow by the U.S. and to native Hawaiians being stripped of their land. There's a lot of literature about this in the Caribbean and how tourism could be a pathway to continued colonial servitude. But the same question could be asked in Hawaii. Because just like in Puerto Rico, tourism has created a service economy. And when I hear people say, you need our tourism dollars, your economy thrives on it, the question is, who's thriving because salaries for natives in the tourism industry are not keeping up with home prices. I've spent my time here interviewing native Hawaiians and I'll have a complete story for you soon. So this TikToker by the name of Bianca Graulu points out something that is incredibly critical to understand, which is to say that colonialism never ended. It was simply bureaucratized and hidden. And most often this bureaucratization is designed in such a way to try and individualize systemic problems. So effectively what is happening in Hawaii? Well, their economy was forcefully restructured by the United States in order to force the native Hawaiians to basically work in the service industry while rich folks from the United States could vacation there. And we can already see the problem with this, but let's dig into it a little bit deeper. Because what ends up happening is it means the richest Americans that are around are going to buy properties for their vacation homes in Hawaii. And that's going to increase the prices of the vacations homes. But they're also going to do everything they can to suppress wages within Hawaii because they don't want to pay the workers who live there. And they definitely don't want to lose a bid to their vacation home to somebody who, you know, actually lives in Hawaii and is from there. But it goes even further than that. Because when Hawaii was trying to protect its population from coronavirus, there were tons of tourists who were going in breaking the coronavirus restrictions and spreading coronavirus around the islands. Then there's also the fact that billionaires are able to effectively bully the government of Hawaii right now in order to build large vacation properties where they can be secluded from everybody else. But in the process of building out those properties, they very often evict native Hawaiians from those places. Then on top of that, you have the fact that the United States military has effectively poisoned some of the water supply in Hawaii. Where a lot of native Hawaiians live, they cannot get clean water in their homes because of the fuel that had leaked out into that water. And of course, the military at this point isn't really doing anything to help those folks. All of these things together paint a pretty bleak picture of where Hawaii is at. And it points to a clear program of using the structure of their economy in order to drive wages down for native Hawaiians and put them in an incredibly tenuous economic position. Where the primary economic option that people living there have is to work in the service industry for the predominantly white vacationers who go there. The United States to this day very clearly maintains a colonial relationship with Hawaii. Much like the rest of the country that we live in, Hawaii was invaded with military force and we demanded that they assimilate into the United States by force and part of that meant forcing them to completely restructure their economy to meet the needs of wealthy capitalists inside of the United States because what this TikToker also said is incredibly important. You have a lot of giant companies that are in Hawaii making huge profits. And while they say that the tourism money is good for their economy, when they say good for the economy, what they really mean is good for the richest people that have investments there. Because I mean, think about it right now. If you're a real estate investor, the economy is really good right now. But if you're a renter, the economy is actually quite terrible. And this can actually sum up why there seems to be so much of a disconnect between a lot of the mainstream press and the average American. That is of course because while they see one of the most glowing economies in many years, what we see as working class people is being squeezed from every direction. Where wages are low, rent is high, the cost of gas is high, people are struggling to afford to survive. Meanwhile, the biggest corporations are making record profits. And of course, they have the audacity to tell you that this is inflation as a result of the stimulus checks. It couldn't, of course, be because of the PPP loans. It couldn't, of course, be the fact that the government has no interest in putting in place price controls. It definitely couldn't be the fact that politicians in the United States really only care about these giant corporations anyway. 
No, I'm definitely sure that it was the stimulus checks that we all got. But the central point here is to understand that the United States is still engaged in colonialism and is still engaged in imperialism. And while it may take a slightly different form, the only reason it's able to take the more modern form is because of the history of explicit direct military violence.